when working with two samples, whether you're building a confidence interval or you're doing a hypothesis test, you really want to rely on technology to do the heavy lifting for you. StatCrunch is probably the easiest tool at your disposal, so I'm going to walk through how to do these types of things in StatCrunch. If you're dealing with two samples and you want to compare the proportion from the two samples, you would go to stat, proportion stats, and two samples. Likely you'll have a summary of data, but if you have columns of data here in StatCrunch, you would, you would use the data option. But often you'll have the summary data. So what that just means is how many successes did you observe in the sample? And I'm just making these numbers up. Let's say you, there was 1,000 people in your sample and 200 um, said yes to whatever you're, you're sampling for. And in your second sample, maybe there was just 900 people and you know 180 of them said yes. So you would type your summary information in and then you can come down here and either perform a hypothesis test or build a confidence interval. If you're doing a confidence interval, make sure you enter in the correct confidence level in the box. If you're doing a hypothesis test, uh, pay attention to your null and your alternative hypothesis here. Typically our null hypothesis is that the proportion from each sample is going to be equal to each other. And so if they're equal, when you subtract them from each other, you should get zero. That's our typical null hypothesis. And then our alternative hypothesis can either just be that they're not equal. It could be that the difference is less than zero. And what that would mean is that the proportion from sample two is the bigger one. It's bigger than sample one, so that when you do the subtraction, you get something less than zero. Or it could be that it's greater than zero, which means the proportion from sample one is bigger, so that when you do this subtraction, you get a positive number bigger than zero. And once you have everything in here correct, hit compute. If you're looking at means, go to stat, and then they will follow the T distribution, just like they did with one sample. So now you're either going to pick two samples or paired. So read the beginning of the chapter. You need to know if your two samples are independent or if they're dependent. If they're dependent and the two samples are really uh, tied to each other, there's a direct correlation between or a direct pairing between values in the first sample and values in the second sample. You want to pick paired for those dependent samples. But if they're independent and values in the first sample are totally not related to values in the second sample, there's no real way to correlate them. You just pick two sample. So for independent, you do two sample. You use with data if you have columns of data in your spreadsheet, otherwise with summary. You want to always make sure this pooled variance is unchecked. And the book discusses this uh, on page 560. You're only going to want to check that if you could prove that the population variances uh, were equal to each other. And that's beyond the scope of this class. Just uncheck the pool variances. And then, and I'm just making these numbers up, but you would enter in your sample standard deviation, your sample mean, and the sizes of each of your samples. And so, once again, think we're comparing whether, in this case, the two means are going to be equal or not. We want to look at the difference between those means, and that's what we'll do in the hypothesis test. Uh, we're typically going to assume that the two means should be equal from each sample, so the difference is zero. And once again, you can check whether, or whether the alternative is that they're not equal, less than, or greater than. And you can build a confidence, confidence interval by clicking that button. And when you're done, hit compute, and it'll give you all, uh, all the data, the information. So really rely on StatCrunch to do this heavy lifting. And you should be really focused on just making sure you understand how to use StatCrunch, how to plug the numbers in, and then really how to interpret the results and understand what they mean.
A brief recap of hypothesis testing. You have your null hypothesis of what you assume the mean is or the proportion and then you set your alpha and if I set my alpha at 0.05 it means that 95 percent of the data is going to be in this area and out in the tail there's just five percent of the data and so when you get your sample back if the test statistic from your sample as some value way out here that's highly unlikely to happen so we'll reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis because there are two options when you get a sample that's way out here in the tail and I'm going to illustrate this with with two graphs the first option is that your null hypothesis is correct and you just had a very unusual sample that'll happen 5% of the time if alpha is 0.05 because some samples do exist that are way out here in the tail. But what we tend to do, what we want to do in statistics instead of believing that we just had got unlucky is reject this null hypothesis because this down here is the more likely situation. Most likely our null hypothesis was just wrong and in terms of if we're talking about means, the mean was actually larger than what we thought with the null hypothesis and if the means larger the whole curve is going to shift to be centered over the mean and so this result from our sample that looks like it's way far away from the mean well it's not really that far away from the mean it's not an unusual sample if our mean was actually bigger it falls within that 95 percent when you have that bigger mean and so this represents rejecting the null hypothesis for some unknown larger alternative mean which makes the sample more believable. And with confidence intervals you get a value from your sample. So you get a value of like your sample mean and you'll build an interval around that sample mean where you will be let's say 95 percent confident that the the true population mean is somewhere within that interval between the lower and the upper bound. So your value from your sample is centered right, uh, right around that sample mean. And so where do we get that length of the interval? How does this all work? Well, if we're 95% confident, it's because our distribution, we can look at it either the t distribution for means or the normal distribution for proportions and we can find the the width we need so that 95 percent of the data is clustered around the mean we know how wide that needs to be and so imagine from your sample if this was the mean you got and you use that width for your interval the true mean is included within that width and that's going to be true anywhere you draw anywhere I draw a dot here to represent getting a sample that's within that 95 percent so if I center it around this dot again the the true mean here is within my upper and my lower limit the only time this is going to be left out of your confidence interval is if you get an unlikely sample way out here and the tails where only 5% of the data is but when you draw the confidence interval I gotta go a little off the screen here but when you center it around that value way out in the tails the true mean is left outside of your confidence interval 